God's grace and uh, time and all the other things that one needs. I came here to win the European Cup. There must be one out of five not working in Sheffield, but yet he's still there. He's still there every week. It's quite remarkable, really, that Sheffield stayed as buoyant and morale stayed as high as it has. Howard Wilkinson and Peter Eustace, the pleasure they've brought to Sheffield in these uh, times is marvellous. In the early 60s, when local lad Howard Wilkinson joined Sheffield Wednesday as a player, both club and city were riding high. First division football and full skilled employment. But they were both on the threshold of a steep decline, a decline that revealed a curious relationship in their fortunes. I remember the year I came, or the season I came, it was perhaps only that season or a few seasons before that, that the players had, uh, had not had to come in a collar and tie for training. Well done. The differences were inside, you know, something like a staff of 40 professionals, 13, 14 apprentices, both dressing rooms filled. Full employment at the club was mirrored in industry. More than 99% of the city's workforce had a job. Well, in 66, of course, we were still in boom times. Uh, whether they were genuine boom times, perhaps with hindsight, you think they weren't. It was uh, largely living on inflation. But we, we were busy. There was uh, possibly still the aftermath of the war and still a lot of reconstruction uh, all over the world. And there were plenty of orders. We'd all got good order books and, uh, and could see good order books for quite a considerable time ahead. We, we led Europe in the most up-to-date plant that there was. I went to some... Uh, openings of plant here in the 60s and earlier, which were, well, the finest in the world, turning out bar steel, if you like, better than anyone else. And uh, uh, such large quantities that uh, you could cope with anything that came along. Close control of the reheating and rolling conditions, combined with the skill of the rolling mill team, permits the successful rolling of a wide range of special alloy steels used extensively by the aircraft, automobile, and specialized engineering industry. And here come the two teams. And it's Sheffield Wednesday on the right as we look at them. The 66 when we went to the final, I mean, it was a boom time, it was fantastic. Yeah, I can remember it all as if it were yesterday, all match. It, uh, when we scored after seven minutes. What's a good throw to four? Macario got out! David Ford got second, then we were winning 2 0, and then disaster. Turns a bad mistake by Jerry Young, it's Deadpool, and it's the third goal. Oh, what a tragedy for Jerry Young. Jimmy Wednesday, two up, uh, now 3 2 down, and how long have we got them? I cried in 66, coming out of Wembley. And like I said, uh, well, I just come out with tears streaming. Out. Well, all of us did. I mean, it's our team, and we got, we got beat, but it was awful, bit awful. But there was still a job to go to on Monday. As the 60s came to an end, however, the steel industry was beginning to get the first bad vibrations. I think we perhaps had lived in a bit of a dream world and uh, we hadn't really seen all the danger signs of overmanning and cost mounting. And particularly, I don't think we fully appreciated the danger of uh, inflation in those days. A lot of countries like Brazil, and the Far East started making basic steel cheaper than we could. We lost customers. 
the heavy manufacturing industry itself changed. I mean, how many motor cars were we making in 1966? Probably five, six, seven times as many as today. Locomotives, aviation. These were all industries that Sheffield Steel depended upon. They put their steel into the products which have died. And once the product dies, the, the market dies. The 70s were to witness major changes on both the football and industrial fronts. The club was the first to reflect on happier times as the team's performances and its support slumped dramatically. During that time, the industry didn't progress or prosper, neither did its football. And this club indeed, which, as you must know, has got one of the best eight stadiums in Europe, declined seriously, just escaping fourth division. The last match of the season against Southend that saved us from the fourth division, we did have dark days, uh, and I think we, none of us uh, who came on to what was really a, a reconstituted board, uh, uh, ever underestimated the challenge in front of us. No! Imports had never taken more than 10% of the domestic market. Uh, by 1977, it had got to 50%. And I think the real worry came perhaps in about 78 onwards, when the private sector had to start shedding jobs and uh, and I think people then started to get worried uh, about the decline of the steel industry. Industry was starting to, to, to sort of get the knock at that time and uh, there was a lot of factories closing down, there was a lot of people becoming unemployed. Um, the football in the, in the city wasn't very much to sort of give people a lift. And uh, it was pretty much a, a, a depressed area as far as support was concerned. You know, the, the crowds were down to 10, 12,000. And uh, for a big club that size, it was, it was sad, really. Uh, good and good and Jack Charlie did a good job for Wednesday. I mean, he went and sat in opposite stand to it, direct to sit, sits in North stand. All fans are sat around him, knew they were struggling. Come on, Jack, like, come and take us over and get us put right. So he said, I oh, will do it. And he didn't even go back home and think about it. He went right out, straight down to the chairman and says, if you want me for a job, I'm here, like, bingo. Jack's appointment in 1978 brought a vast improvement in the team's performances just when the city needed it most. But in football, you just can't please everyone. We got Jack Charlton, and he, money-wise, stabilised the club, but football-wise, it was awful to watch. Awful. I mean, when, when Jack Charlton there, they got ball Wednesday and you could go out, get a pie, come back and they hadn't moved. When the terraces were empty a few years ago, the, the a story is that one of the players went to Jack Charlton and he says, Jack, he says, uh, my old school want me to go back and tell them how to play at football, he says. What shall I tell them? So Jack studied, he says, tell them that's got flu. <laughs> Jack did uh, a, a very good job for us. He, he got the playing side of the finances uh, very much under his control. Uh, he got a lot of our own youngsters uh, who were coming up through the junior teams and he took a chance with them and pushed them in and uh, some of them are playing today and playing extremely well. Um, and I, I think we have a lot to, uh, to say thank you to Jack Charlton for. Why make the past your sacred cow? Why guess you've changed, you've changed. In 1980, a national steel strike completely overshadowed Sheffield Wednesday's promotion to Division 2. A rejected pay claim and fears of massive redundancies led to a three-month stoppage, and to make matters worse, Sheffield's unemployment rate doubled to 11.5%. Major restructuring was taking place in the nationalised sector of the steel industry, but for some famous private firms, a depressed market was to force their closure. Just depressing when you look around places like this. <coughs> a short while back, we took factory down the other side of here. And when you 